Hey folks, it's your friendly neighborhood science buff here. Ever thought we knew everything about our own solar system? Well, buckle up, because we might be in for a big surprise like planet-sized big. So imagine this, we've got eight planets we know and love, but some scientists think there's a hidden heavyweight out there, Planet Nine. And no, we're not talking about a little guy like Pluto. This one's a beast, potentially 10 times the mass of Earth and four times its size. Now, you're probably thinking, how could we miss something that huge great question? Planet Nine might be chilling about 600 astronomical units away from the Sun. For context, that's way, way out there. Neptune, our furthest known buddy, is only 30 hour away. It's like having a secret room in your house that you've never noticed. Jump to 2016, and we have two modern-day cosmic detectives, astronomers Konstantin Vadigan and Michael Brown. Now, Michael Brown is no stranger to making waves in the astronomical community, he's the guy who played a major role in Pluto getting demoted to a dwarf planet. Yup, Pluto's not too fond of him. These two sharp minds came up with a compelling case for Planet Nine. They noticed that some distant objects, way out beyond Neptune, were moving in a peculiar way. It was as if an unseen giant was subtly tweaking their orbits with its gravitational pull. Think of it like a cosmic puppeteer, invisibly jerking the strings of these far-off asteroids and dwarf planets. Intriguing, right? Now, you might wonder, how on Earth or beyond Earth could we have missed such a colossal planet for so long? Excellent question. Our story of misconnections starts with Percival Lowell over a century ago. Instead of settling for a modest telescope like your average stargazer Lowell, being fabulously wealthy, built himself a swanky observatory on a mountaintop in Arizona. This guy wasn't kidding around. He was absolutely convinced there was another planet out there, Planet X, he called it, that was messing with the orbits of Uranus and Neptune. He dedicated years to this celestial hide and seek game but never found the elusive Planet X. In 1930, Clyde Toombaugh, using Lowell's observatory, discovered Pluto, cue the celebrations. Finally, they had found the new planet they were searching for, or so they thought. It didn't take long for the excitement to dwindle when astronomers realized Pluto was more of a cosmic pipsqueak than a heavyweight contender. Things took an interesting turn in 1978 when Pluto's moon, Charon, was discovered. This allowed astronomers to calculate Pluto's mass accurately, and boy, were they surprised. Pluto turned out to be a tiny tiddler, just one-sixth the mass of our own moon. It was clear that Pluto didn't have the oomph to be yanking Uranus and Neptune off their predicted paths. So if Pluto wasn't the mystery tugger, what was? Enter Voyager 2 in 1989. This intrepid spacecraft zipped by Neptune and gave us a surprise we had miscalculated Neptune's mass. With the correct mass in the equations, it turned out Neptune and Uranus were right where they were supposed to be. No mysterious Planet X needed. This seemed like the end of the Planet X saga. But wait! Fast forward to the past decade, and whispers of Planet Nine began to surface again. Beatigan and Brown's findings rekindled the cosmic mystery. Despite Lowell's wild goose chase based on a mistaken premise, the modern observations suggested he might have been onto something after all. It's like finding out your eccentric great-uncle, who swore by UFOs, might actually have been right about one thing there really was something strange out there, just not where or what he thought. So, are Beatigan and Brown chasing another cosmic phantom? Or is Planet Nine the real deal? Only time, and some incredibly sharp telescopes will tell. One thing's for sure the hunt is back on, and this time, the stakes are astronomically high. Here's the kicker if Planet Nine exists. It's incredibly faint and hard to spot with our current tech. It's like looking for a needle in a cosmic haystack. Beatigan and Brown believe Planet Nine is so dim that it will only just be visible with our current technology, given perfect atmospheric conditions which may only come around a few times per year. So for now, all we can do is try to predict where we think it should be, then train our best telescopes on that part of the sky and hope. Imagine not being able to find Planet Nine in a world where we've already tracked down planets tens of light years from Earth to finding Yetis in the Himalayas without realizing one's been living in the garden. But in truth, that analogy is a little bit off. If there is a Yeti in our garden, he's chronically shy and fond of dressing up in full-on camo gear. 
whereas the few yetis we found out there in the Himalayas just happened to be in exactly the right place at the right time, and were yodeling at the top of their lungs. I should point out there are other possible explanations for what might be causing the unusual orbits of the extreme trans-Neptunian objects we've found so far. Perhaps the most interesting of which is the idea that a black hole hidden within our own solar system might be to blame. Before you start worrying the Earth is about to be sucked into a giant cosmic vacuum cleaner, the black hole in question would be a tiny primordial black hole of the purely theoretical variety that may have formed soon after the Big Bang. This particular flavor of black hole is much smaller than your average collapsed star type, being only about the size of a grapefruit, but with a mass 5 to 10 times that of the Earth. As interesting as both this and the Planet 9 theory sound, the truth may actually be far simpler. Remember how the evidence leading Lowell to believe in Planet X turned out to be a red herring? Well, it's quite possible that could be the case here too. Badigan and Brown are basing their assumptions on the very small sample size of extreme trans-Neptunian objects we've been able to study so far. We're talking tens out of the total population in the billions, and drawing big conclusions planet-sized ones, in fact from small datasets is a dangerous business, no matter how compelling they may seem on the surface. Ultimately, in science, the burden of proof lies with whoever's making the contentious claim. And for now, Badigan and Brown haven't been able to prove their theory. They do, however, believe it's only a matter of time. So, I guess that means all we need to do is watch this space literally. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and ring the bell so you don't miss any future updates. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and stay tuned for more cosmic mysteries and scientific discoveries. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.